13th, mark your cal calendar. The Canadian men's hockey team begins its quest to defend the gold medal. And here to talk about it is Nick Kiprios from Sportsnet. Nice to see Good you. Good morning, Jen. Of course, we had to have you in today to talk about it. Uh, some surprises, uh, people that we, guys that we would expect to be on the team. Well, I think if first and foremost you have the best player in the world uh, who happens to be on your on your country or on your team, Canada, and that's Sidney Crosby. This is really based on him. He's coming off the game-winning goal, obviously in Vancouver four years ago. This is a team that's really based on him. This time he's got his partner in crime, Chris Kunitz. Everybody talked about Kunitz not. Not deserving to be there or only there because Sidney Crosby, uh, uh, he writes shotgun with Sidney Crosby. No, not at all. This guy is a good hockey player. He's there on his own merit. He's won before in Anaheim. He's won before uh, with uh, Pittsburgh. So he's there because he's a good hockey player, not they, because he's uh, uh, Robin to Batman here. And they have chemistry. There's not a lot of time to build chemistry on this team, so they have to look at that when they're putting this team together. Well, if you if you remember, uh, Jen, in Vancouver four years ago, Sidney Crosby didn't get off to a good start. In fact, halfway through the tournament, uh, they were juggling lines. They were trying to find the right combination. And we were all asking, what's wrong with Sidney Crosby? I don't think that they want to go through that again and take the chance that he catches fire like he did at the end of the tournament. Therefore, he's got Kunitz, who he's had all season long, right there in a comfort zone for him to start the tournament. Yeah, he, well, he, it ended off well four years ago. Let's hope it does. It, we, we do the same. Uh, how do you think the team will do? I think they're going to compete. The competition's awfully tough here. Uh, there's still going to be some question marks on players that might not be there. That'll only come up in their face if they lose. Uh, the biggest surprise for me is no Marty St. Louis, and I know he's one of the older players here. Uh, but he still led the league in scoring last year, and albeit a shortened season, uh, for Stevie Eiserman to leave him off, it's a, a real tough decision. Me, personally, I would have had him on. I think I could have covered myself on, off, because he is deserving there, but also, he's up from the Tampa Bay Lightning. That's the team that I am the general manager from. I think it would be rather tough going to work every day after the Olympics, looking at Marty St. Louis going, oh God, I think he hates me. I think he hates me. Yeah. But it's something that he's going to have to live with, not once, but twice, because he also wasn't chosen in Vancouver four years ago. Can we talk about some of the other snubs? Well, I think... Uh, Eric Stahl is one that people thought that uh, he's been a good soldier for uh, for Team Canada over the years. But the one decision that they did make that they refused to snub is Rick Nash. That one has a lot of people scratching their heads because it, on the merit of the season, he shouldn't be there. But I think he's the one exception to the rule because they know that if he hits a certain level in terms of his play, He's amongst the best players in the world. And they're really gambling that he's got a month to get his game going again, and he'll be that dominant player that they've seen in the past. Uh, let's talk about the goalies. Well, solid but not spectacular. How's that? Uh, I, I think that uh, when you look at all of them, and Luongo's got, had the most success. He's gotten the deepest in the Stanley Cup playoffs, and he's also the guy that finished off the gold medal in Vancouver. So there is the guy that comes in at least with the most experience. Other than that, Carey Price to see, seems to be the flavor uh, of, of the year in terms of the guy that should get the start, but there's a guy with a, a questionable uh, track record in the Stanley Cup playoffs. He's, he's a losing goaltender in, in the playoffs. And say what you will about su past success, the biggest measure is Stanley Cups and playoff success. And right now, all three of them, and, and Luongo to a lesser extent, have struggled uh, in the Stanley Cup playoffs when it comes to winning it all. Uh, let's talk about our biggest competition. How about Russia? How about uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the team that's hosting the most? And, and we know what this uh, Olympic is, is going to mean to a guy like uh, Alexander Ovechkin. And right now, the best goal scorer in the world outside of uh, Stamkos, who got hurt, is Ovechkin. He was going to go whether or not the NHL was going to send players or not. That's how much the Olympics means to him. And then you've got Malkin, who's now uh, hitting his stride again for the Pittsburgh Penguins. I think if they get any type of goaltending at all, uh, Russia will be tough. But what does it mean to Canada? Everything. <laughs> it's meant everything for us for a long time. Uh, you can say what you will about the talent or the experience. It'll always come down to character, and sometimes we believe that we rise above the rest because of it. It happened in Vancouver with Sidney Crosby scoring the game-winning goal. Canadians are going to hope again that character can shine through. This is what we live for.
<laughs> okay, so uh, thanks for all the information, Nick Kiprios from Sportsnet. You can follow Nick on Twitter. I do at Re uh, Real Kipper. Jen, Jen, nobody drinks orange juice around here. It's there, but nobody drinks it. You know what? I talk Come to on, the folks from Tropicana all the time, Cheers. and they always say, Jennifer, we love it because you always drink the orange juice. I do every day. I will finish this for sure. We're taking a break on BT. You want to see who can beat each other? Oh, you've won. Never oh. Lose it. Oh.